My vision of the future is that uh, digital medicine will help us uh, live easier and, and hopefully it'll be harder to die. I imagine the health of everything. Every athlete, every kid will be gaming. Uh, every, every patient will have some kind of sensor that's picking up their body signals from their body computer. And we'll get so used to interacting with our biometric data that it'll become sort of inculcated in every aspect of society. So it'll be part of our gaming, part of our social culture at every level. Our intent is to record the heartbeat at least once of everyone in the world. And to have that as our first uh, 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 effort at creating this digital data set that has everybody in the world's heart rate and can be used to improve global health and awareness. And that large data set that people will continuously be inputting into heart rate and their healthcare stories can be used and analyzed to um, very favorably make observations about global health, global crises, global epidemics with a high degree of accuracy. And so that's something that we're just really energized around. Just with my little sensors and what's possible now is I was this last year with a simple device on my iPhone able to diagnose serious arrhythmias and impending heart attacks in people all over the world. This particular sensor is a, a sensor that's able to record an EKG from a case on an iPhone. So we'd given a bunch of these cases out to attendees at one of our conferences and one of the guys who was, had this on his phone, we happened to be in Mumbai, uh, traveling for business, and he showed this thing to a Nigerian he was at a um, reception with. And the guy held it and recorded his EKG. So then I you know, switched to uh, myself in Los Angeles, looking at these things, because I reviewed them all, seeing somebody in the, in the midst of like having a heart attack. So I identify who it was. I call the guy. He's in Mumbai. And I said, I think you're having you know, some serious issues. And he said, oh, no, that wasn't me. That was this Nigerian fellow. I need to go find him. So that, you know, and then he found him and told the guy and he, he sought help. But for me, that was like profound. The ability to access your data and continuously transmit it is a basic civil right. And I view it as an important civil rights question. And I say that because there's a lot of resistance to it that makes me become almost a little bit of an activist. And much of it from the medical community who talk in, you know, highly arrogant terms about sequestering the information and not allowing people to have access to it. So if what we really want to do is be better health care providers and engage patients more and improve our outcomes, why wouldn't we want patients to be educated and have this data? What are we afraid of? What drives me to do this is to, to, to create a health care system that's global, where experts all over the world can reach patients very remote from them, is just my desire to um, serve the underserved. I've been very privileged in my own life. I've worked very hard to get to where I am now, so I'd like to be able to leverage that expertise over a large global population. There's no reason why I can't with digital. So that feels very liberating and that feels very hopeful and that feels like real impact over larger populations than whoever I could impact as a doctor seeing patients one off every day. Mm -hmm.